Folks, the time has come. The end of an era is officially upon us. Mario Kart 8, a game that came out in its original form way back in 2014, has just released its final course. Looking at the original base game, the first two rounds of DLC, the Switch port, and the booster pass that straight up doubled the number of courses, the final track count sits at a staggering 96. That's the same number of tracks as in Mario Kart 7, Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart Double Dash, and Mario Kart 64 combined. I know I'm usually known as the Pokemon and FNAF guy, but when it comes down to pure numbers, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is easily my most played game. I have over 200 hours logged in my Switch alone, which doesn't even include the several more hundred hours I spent playing on my roommate's Switches in college, or all the time I spent on the original Wii U version when I was a kid. Seriously, I have played so much Mario Kart. Suffice it to say, this game holds a very special place in my life, and I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a little bittersweet playing that final course. But I figured the only way to give this game the send-off it deserves is by doing what I do best. It's time to buckle up in my signature car, the Mercedes 300 SL Roadster with rollers and a cloud glider, hit that gas, and statistically rank all 96 tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Richard, hit that intro. If you're excited for this video, then do me a solid and smash that subscribe button with your car. Just run it. Just run it. You know, maybe this wasn't the best idea in Heinz. Statistically ranking every track? What does that even mean, I hear you ask? Well, if you haven't seen one of my ranking videos like this, it's actually fairly simple. I'll be using a process called a decision matrix, where I'll score each track in a number of criteria, weight each criterion in order of importance, and use those to get a final score for every track out of 10 possible points. Whichever track has the highest score is officially the best track in the game. I'll explain everything as we go, so it should be easy enough to follow along, and there'll be a link to my final spreadsheet with all the data in the description down below. The first criterion is the fun factor. How enjoyable is this track to actually race on? How quickly do I vote for this track in an online lobby? How mad do I get when the rest of the lobby all decide to vote for Water Park when Koopa Cape was literally right there, guys? I'll be personally ranking every one of these tracks on a scale from one to five, where one is a track that's actively bad, like Excite Bike Arena, which takes the much beloved shape of Baby Park, but removes all the chaos that makes that track actually interesting and replaces with uh, just a couple of jumps, I guess. Fun. Two is a track that's not terrible, just kind of boring, like Toad Circuit. I'm pretty sure I've driven on this go-kart track in real life. A three is for tracks that I'm totally neutral on. If you have any strong opinions on something like Thwomp Ruins, then you gotta reevaluate your choices. Four is for tracks that are pretty good to great. I mean, ain't nobody got anything bad to say about Wario's Goldmine. Don't you lie to me. Don't you lie to me. And five is for those few perfect tracks, paved with solid euphoria, and the rivers flow with liquid smiles. And you're telling me that you'd rather do freaking Water Park over this? I mean, it's so bland, they couldn't even come up with a name for it. It's just Water Park. Now, before we continue, some of you may have spotted a problem. In ranking videos past, I've stayed away from opinion-based criteria. I've always stuck to things with hard numbers and statistics associated with them to remove any personal bias. I mean, after all, you can't make an objective ranking based off of nothing but subjective criteria, right? <laughs> Wrong. Maybe for an ordinary man, this would be impossible, but I 
am no ordinary man. And perhaps I did not stress enough before how much Mario Kart I've played. All right, you think this is a bit? This is not a bit. I'm being dead serious. These tracks are burned into the back of my eyes. I know everyone to my very bones. Believe me, I know the fun ones from the bad ones. All these criteria are based on my opinions, yes. Because my opinion is objectively correct. So I don't want to hear any of you water park stands coming after me in the comments trying to say that this fake loop-de-loop -loop is better than Koopa F- <laughs> The next criteria is course theming. You ever seen those cars parked in the middle of the mall and thought about how much fun the person who got to drive them in there must have had? And thus, Coconut Mall became the most iconic track in a generation. The theme and aesthetics of a track can turn an otherwise bland series of turns and ramps into the one of the most beloved tracks in the series, in Waluigi's Pinball. Yeah, yeah, you heard me. If not for the pinball aesthetic, this track kinda sucks. And most of it doesn't even look like a... a what is this part of the pinball machine? No one likes that part. Again, I'll be scoring these tracks from 1 to 5, where 1 is anything bad or bland, like most of the real-life city tracks, spoilers, driving through New York is not that cool, 2 is for anything that's not actively bad, just kind of forgettable, like the 9,000 different desert levels, 3 is neutral, 4 is something pretty cool, like letting you drive a go-kart through an airport, or Hyrule Castle, come here Ganon, and 5 is for any track where you keep falling off because you're too busy staring in wonder at the literal road to heaven that you're driving on. And the third and final criterion for today's video is the music, which admittedly might not be as important as the track itself or the visuals, but still deserves to be taken into account. To keep it simple, I'll be using the same 1 to 5 scale again. One for any tracks that are actively bad, two for ones that aren't great, three for ones that are neutral to pretty good, four for tracks that are great, and five for songs that make me fall off because I'm too busy f***ing jamming. Oh, listen to this. Spoilers, none of them got below a three. Heck, I gave a few a six. So with all those scores in place, all that's left to do is choose the weights and we'll have our final result. Weights are basically just a percentage of a whole of how much each criteria matters. So in this case, fun factor is obviously the most important. So I weighted that at 50%. Next is theming at 35%. And lastly, the music rounds it out at 15%, totaling 100%. So now all that's left to do is to multiply each score by its weight Add all three together for every track, and then multiply by two just to standardize everything and get it on a nice round scale from one to ten, and then whichever track has the highest score wins. Simple as that. Only there's one problem. After crunching the numbers, it seems that I have a tie for first place. I won't spoil which yet, but there are two tracks that both scored a perfect 10. Now I could just reveal those two, call it a draw, and that'd be that, but this is the end of the Mario Kart 8 era we're talking about. Once this video is finished, this chapter of my life will officially be closed, and I'm not about to end it on a draw, but fear not, for this is easily remedied. All we need to do is add in another criteria to differentiate the two in the lead, and we should have a clear answer. So after thinking about it, I think adding in difficulty as a new category might make sense. I had initially lumped that in with fun. I personally think that a more difficult course is more fun, but that might not be the case for everyone. So let's simply add that in with one being either too easy or unreasonably difficult, and five being perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Like Rainbow Road Wii. Get good, scrub! So let's just adjust the weights to account for this new factor and break this tie once and for all. I'm glad to announce that the statistically best track in all of Mario Kart is... You know what? Now that I think about it, I am forgetting one more thing. 
Most tracks in Mario Kart have you looping around the same course three times. There are a few, however, like Mount Wario or Rainbow Road 3DS, where all three laps are completely different. I think that the added variety that these tracks offer is awesome, and it makes the course way more replayable since each leg stays fresh three times longer. So what if we gave five points to every track that has completely unique laps, four to tracks with some variance from laps to laps, three for your classic three loop courses, and one for Baby Park, which has you drive around the same cul-de-sac seven times. But if we do that, then it seems like we once again have a tie for first place. Though they no longer have perfect scores, I'll reveal it now, Rainbow Road Wii and Rainbow Road 3DS are both sitting atop the ladder. <laughs> what can I say? Your boy likes a road made from the visible electromagnetic spectrum. But no matter, I'll simply add in a few new criteria and the age of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe lives on. You know what everyone loves? A good shortcut, a gap in a fence, a ramp in the grass, a corner you can jump. I love me some good shortcuts. Bonus points for shortcuts that don't require an item. Uh, sure, getting a triple mushroom and flying over half of Cheeseland is super fun, but I think something even as small as this little jump on Mount Wario is really fun to get good at and raises the skill ceiling of a game that otherwise relies a lot on luck. It's a shame that both Rainbow Road Wii and Rainbow Road 3DS have the same number of shortcuts. I feel like I gotta come up with a snappier name for those two. But I can worry about that later because this video isn't over yet and I can stay living in this perfect moment forever. Let the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe era continue. All we need is more criteria. Ramps. Everybody loves ramps. The more ramps a course has, the better in my opinion. You know what sucks though? Tracks with weird traction. I hate driving on snow in real life. Why would I want to do it in a video game? What about the anti-gravity portions? The new gimmick of Mario Kart 8. Those are pretty fun, right? I mean, most of the time you can't really tell when you're upside down, but I mean, we'll throw it in there all the same. Are we still tied? <laughs> Great, then let's keep going. You know what's annoying? When the game decides to give you the same track over and over and over again on random mode, I don't want to play Ice Ice Outpost for the thousandth time. Uh, minus points for that. Riding's fun, right? Swooping, scooping, zigzagging all the way through the air. Yeah, yeah. Bonus points for gliding. Screw desert tracks. Just in general. There's too many, they're not fun, and there's too much sand. It's coarse, it's rough, and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Toads are great, right? Any track that's got toads in it, instant plus five points, right? Are we still tied? That's fine, I can keep going. You know what? I take it back. Gliding kind of sucks. Every single time I just get sniped by some green shell, and then Lakitu decides to carry me all the way back up to the top when I was literally in first, you son of you a- You know that one little bridge in Yoshi's Valley that you can take to to just skip half the course. That thing's pretty cool, right? Bonus points for that. You know what? I'm not usually a stickler for graphics, but you gotta admit, some of these look drop dead gorgeous, but Paris Promenade could have used some more. The era of Mario Kart 8 will never end. I got this sick replay on Maple Treeway saved on my Switch. Doesn't really relate to anything, but I feel like it should still be considered. You know what? Why stop at tracks? Let's throw the battle arenas in there too. Get all those. Look at that. Stick with them. Take the overall length of each track into account. After all, the longer the track, the longer I can put off finishing this video. I know I already talked about music, but that one moment in Dolphin Shoals when you come out of the water and it's somehow always perfectly timed with the song so that the saxophone starts to blare in, that's gotta be at least five points right there. Does it make me cry? One point if the track fills me with a deep sense of existential dread, knowing that this will be the final new course I ever play in this game. Did I mention the desert tracks again? Because they all suck bar none. The last vestiges of my child childhood have finally gone out, leaving only the cold realities of adulthood as I begin my slow march towards the inevitable death, and five points for no! Is there a monkey? According to this guy on Reddit, that's the most important thing, and that works for You're me. You're probably thinking, Charlie, enough is enough. You have enough criteria. But no, no, I don't have enough criteria. I will never have enough. Because once I stop, then I have to say goodbye to this game. And I'm not ready to say goodbye. Not yet. I know I can replay these tracks as many times as I want. I can hop in an online lobby. I could get in a Discord call with my college buddies to keep playing, but 
It'll never be the same as it was. It'll never be as new or exciting or mind-blowing as it used to be. This video is the last new thing that this game will ever give me. So when it's done, that's it. It's done. So I have to keep going. I don't care that Rainbow Road Wii is in the lead and that the tie was broken long ago and I could stop here. You know what? No, 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 no. I don't have to stop. I don't have to end. I can keep this game alive forever. As long as I never end this video, this game will live on. So you know what? We're running it back from the top. Folks, the time has come. The end of an era is officially upon us. Mario Kart 8, a game that came out in its original form way back in 2014, has just released its final course. Looking at the original base game, the first two rounds of DLC, the Switch port, and the booster pass that straight up doubled the number of courses, the final track count sits at a staggering 96. That's the same number of tracks as in Mario Kart 7, Mario Kart Wii, Mario Kart Double Dash, and Mario Kart 64 combined. And it will continue to grow because thanks to me, this game will live on forever. Think about it. The only reason they haven't released Mario Kart 9 yet is because people are still talking about Mario Kart 8 nine years after it came out. So if I keep talking about it, then they'll have to keep supporting it. They'll have to announce another booster pass with another 48 tracks, bringing us in the middle of 2025, but I can just keep going. I can keep re- winding. If you're excited for this video, then do me a solid and don't hit it with your car. Just give it a click. Drive responsibly. Damn. Statistically ranking every track? What does that even mean, I hear you say? Well, if you haven't seen one of my ranking videos like this, it's actually fairly simple. I'll be using a process called a decision matrix, where I'll Actually, you know what? That's that's too easy. What if instead I did a thorough four hour long video essay analysis of every single track so we can get a full grasp and appreciation of every single one. That sounds fitting enough. Let's run it back again. Mario Kart Stadium appears to be based on a classic go-kart track. The layout and setting are reminiscent of starting tracks from games past, but the nighttime lighting gives it a totally unique vibe. As we observe the first foot of the race, we notice that the roads are made from standard pavement. You know what, you know, to truly appreciate this, we need to go back even further. August 27th, 1992. The original Mario Kart game is released for the Super Nintendo. It features Mario and the gang driving motorized go-karts, which... The original go-kart was created by Los Angeles engineer Art Ingalls, who aimed to create a smaller motorized vehicle that... Henry Ford created the first motor vehicle in 1896 to allow people to better smash subscribe buttons. But to understand how, we need to go back even further. How big is a Minecraft block? If you Sorry you got murdered, kid, but I'm not going down like that. Every <laughs> One year later, I have around 14 and a half thousand. Yeah, you can call me Squirtle, cause uh I'm gonna take a bite out of that for sh God speed, my friend. God speed. Today, I'm being joined by my good friend, Icy Richard. This is a real spring lock. Sorry to dunk on your childhood, but that epic battle you had against Cynthia was just two equations subtracting from each other. Special to a murder melon. How's it going, Chip Driver? See you in hell, bud. Literally. Joe! What's the Townsend Charles Lunt, Sir Joe here? Bow before me, Jeep Simpletons. I am your god now. Fakemon Spotlight. 
can nobody stand up to the king? I I guess you can call it like a review kind of show. Ned, wait, Ned. That's a woo. Okay. Hello there. It's so very nice to meet you. Welcome to the world of Pokemon. You see what I mean? We can revisit these old memories time and time again, but it's just not the same. We can replay these tracks as many times as we want. We can perfect every shortcut. We can make the clutches comebacks after getting blue shelled. We could hit our friends with the most god tier bob -omb sniper. I mean, are you seeing this? That wasn't me. That was my friend. I was not involved in any of this, but it was still pretty cool. Huh. I'll never be able to experience any of these tracks for the first time again. But maybe... Maybe that doesn't actually matter. I mean, all of my fondest memories, all of these saved replays on my Switch, they weren't from the first time we played each track. They were from the time when we set the game to random and just played for hours. On the few times when we didn't get Ice Ice Outpost. Maybe... Just maybe, I was wrong. Even if I finish this video, that doesn't mean that the Mario Kart 8 era is over. As long as we keep playing, as long as we keep joining those lobbies, as long as we keep making new memories, as long as we keep having fun, new tracks or no, the era of Mario Kart 8 will live on forever. Or at least until Mario Kart 9 comes out. And let's be honest, at this point, they're probably going to pull Windows and just call it 10, which is... It. I guess Tor is a thing. This is a positive ending. So, which track is statistically the best? According to my data and my own personal opinion, it's the final course of the game, Rainbow Road Wii. Mario Kart Wii was the first Mario Kart game I ever played when I was a young boy. So it's only fitting that this track should be the one to bookend this chapter, this era. But in reality, the best track in the game is whichever one I'm currently playing. Unless it's the Dumb Desert one. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's some fun to be had, and I intend to have it. Let's go. Are you fuck? This video is brought to you by my amazing patrons, including Alakazam, Ethan Furlano, and Sherry and Mark. If I got to play Mario Kart with you all, I mean, I'd still probably win, I'm the best, but it would be a blast.